Hey everybody, this is Braden Chase for English Hackers. <laughs> Sorry, something weird just happened there. Uh, for English Hackers, it is great to be with you here tonight. Um, I wanted to teach you guys something that was important that actually happened just today. So I was at school teaching my students and uh, one of them knocked on my door and he came inside and he said, Mr. Chase, um, I'm having some problems with some of the words in class. So this is a reading class, I'm his reading teacher. And there's these words that I don't understand. So can you help me with these? And I said, sure, let's talk about it. So we sit down, we're talking for a minute. And he says, he said to me, well, what about this? And what about these different words? And then he asked about this word concurrent, which is one of our vocabulary words for the, for the chapter, concurrent. He's like, I don't, I don't understand concurrent. I'm like, okay, well, why, why? He's like, because to me, concurrent means somebody who's in a race, right? Two people who are racing each other, that's concurrent. And I said, aha, that's not what it means in English. <laughs> that's, that's not quite right in English. And he goes, I know, but to me, that's what it means. And I said, yes, but that's not how languages work. Um, the the meaning of the word concurrent in English is different from the meaning um, that you have in your head and what we need to get is the meaning for the word in English and he said but I think it should mean concurrent and or sorry I think that concurrent should mean <laughs> someone who who's running or competing against each other I said I, I know um, he's a French speaker, right? So in French, they have this word that goes together. They have, I don't speak French, but they have a word that's like concurrent or something like that, that means competitor. So he was having this confusion, this competition in his mind between the English word and the French word that looked very similar, but had different meanings. And he was, he was having a hard time with that. So I talked to him about um, learning a word, how to learn an English word. And that was, um, we went through this process that I call negotiation of meaning and how you um, walk through the steps of, okay, here's this word. What does it mean? How do people use it? What does the dictionary say? What are some similar words? Um, do native speakers put it at the beginning of the sentence or the end of the sentence? And all of these things, right? You start feeling the size of that word. How big is that word? And in my head, I actually see a picture of like this ball. <laughs> like it, it's a physical thing, the size of it. And the and the, the best example that I have for this is the word book. So if, if you think of the word book, it's, I mean, how many different types of books are there? Uh, uh, hundreds, thousands of different types of books. You have big books and little books and you have uh, short books and long books and you have um, uh, story books and uh, fact books and encyclopedia books and uh, uh, Harry Potter books and all these I think they have all these different kinds of books right tons and tons of just huge word so much stuff inside of it tons of things that fit inside of this one word book okay but if we change those words if we do okay we have book but then we have storybooks, that's smaller word. And then we have, inside of the storybooks, we have um, children's storybooks, and that's even smaller. And then we have even smaller, 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 we get down to things like um, Harry Potter books, right? It's very specific, but still, which one of the Harry Potter books? It's a little group. Oh, the um, Order of the Phoenix. Okay, now we're a really specific book, okay? That name, those words, are really specific to that book, okay? That space is not as big as the entire word of big, or, or of book, right? It's not as big as that whole thing. And I kind of talked to him about that to help him understand um, that we need to negotiate the size of the word. So he wanted the word concurrent to have this much larger meaning, and I said, no, 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 that, that part doesn't fit. It doesn't work here and it doesn't work there, it works here in this smaller area. So and that, and that kind of helped him understand that um, the, the, the words in English and in other language are often shared right between French and, and uh, Portuguese and Spanish and, and Italian and German. There's a lot of shared words. But 
they're not the same. And you need to, as you're learning a word, you need to look at all of these different areas and how big, how big is this word? And collapse it and, and find out where it fits inside of the language. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Um, if you like these things, um, I, on the YouTube channel, right, there's a little subscribe button. You can subscribe underneath. And uh, if you like the page, you can like the page over there in, in Facebook, right? That'd be good too. <laughs> anyway, have a great night, guys. See you tomorrow.